Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get to the secret location in chapter 4, the Purple Cloud Mountain. It is highly suggested that you do this secret quest before fighting the final boss in this chapter because at the end you will get an item, a vessel that is going to really help you in that fight. Not to mention this is a really cool secret area for you to explore. It has actually a couple of bosses that you're going to encounter there, so very worth doing. It is very easy to miss this quest. Even the shrine that actually leads to the beginning of this quest is out of the way. So I'm going to give you guys all the step by steps. We're going to start from the upper hollow in the web hollow. This is the area that you kind of land at the beginning. So everyone should have this point. And from here, what you're going to do is go around and go up the little stairs. At this point, you're going to follow down. And you're going to go kind of veer towards the right a little bit, go towards that broken wooden bridge. You're going to jump down. After you do that, you jump down again. And you're going to go now towards the cave where you see all the web sacks. And you're just going to go all the way through all of that and come out on the other side. You can defeat the enemy. And then just continue your merry way. You want to go towards the right. You do not want to drop off. You want to continue where the uh, spider webs are. So you're going to go through all of that. You're going to see a bunch of, again, uh, spider cocoons uh, type of things. So you're going to pass all of that. More enemies. You're going to now go up the stairs. And you know you're in the right place once you see this green luscious area kind of side of a cliff type of situation. Go all the way up. And once you're up, when you turn right, you can already see the shrine that we want to activate. This is the Pool of Shadow J shrine. And I'm going to give you guys the bonus right now. So this is an excellent spot for farming. If you have the transformation action slumber, and if you don't have it, I have a video how to get it. I'm going to link it in the description. But I think this is probably the fastest form in the game for wheels and therefore XP as well as sparks. Just go towards the right of the shrine where you're going to see all those spider eggs type of thing. You're going to go in there and what you're going to do is basically transform into the action slumber and then de-transform because that causes an explosion. You destroy all of that and suddenly you get about 2,500 or 2,700 on each run. Plus, I think about 100 XP. Uh, you can use the cloud step, you know, to go in even to make it faster. Do the transformation, de-transform and after that, just go into your inventory and I use the thing that takes you back to the last shrine. Reset everything and just do it again. It should really probably be just maybe 10 seconds or 15 seconds maybe at most. It is a great way for you to level up, get some wheels. So with that, with the bonus out of the way, very simple. All you have to do now is go past that area just a little bit. You're going to see a larger ball sack, I guess. And what you're going to do is just hit that ball sack until the enemy pops up. This is the first part of getting this secret location to show up. You have to do this part. This is the beginning. You have to defeat this boss. He's actually really soft, really easy. After you defeat this boss, he's going to just escape. And now you're going to continue with the rest of the chapter four story. And it's going to be take a while before you encounter this enemy again. So I'm going to just jump out to the closest location to encounter this enemy from the main story. So once you hit this shrine, which is called the Court of Illumination, what you're going to do is go across the door that is across this uh, shrine. So you exit and you're just going to go to this area. So you're going to see the two fires light up outside. You're going to follow this road and you're going to follow this road all the way 
to the top. You're just gonna follow it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. When you reach the top, you're going to see this house. This area is a dead end. However, there is a soak at the back that is a pretty good one. You should definitely grab it. And there's also another secret kind of boss in this area. So the fungus, all the ones that you see on the ground, one of them is going to spawn an enemy that is going to give you a spirit. The enemy is called Fungi Woman. It is not required for this quest. I'm just adding this as an extra information since it's just nearby. You have to defeat this enemy really quickly because she seems to regenerate the health bar. So you have to be really quick. Once you're done, go back to where you came from. First, you're going up those stairs. You're going to reach an intersection here. So if you go to the left, you're basically going back to where you come from. You're going now just to the right. There's going to be a cave. And the moment you go down, the enemy that you encounter at the very beginning of this quest, he's going to show up again. This is going to be the second stage that you fight him. And he's also pretty easy at this stage as well. So it should not be too much of a trouble. Once he is defeated, he is going to reveal the area in the wall that you are able to enter, which is the secret area Purple Cloud Mountain. So it is a pretty large location. You can go ahead, do your exploring. Just make sure to talk to the NPCs that you encounter on the way, especially the snake. Do your own exploration is quite large. The only two tips that I would tell you about this area is uh, number one, this is really not a tip actually this one, but you're gonna encounter this, uh, some sort of scorpion dude. This is what I did. I He did not attack me, so I didn't really destroy anything around him. Uh, I think the whole point is if you break those jars, then you're going to make him angry and trigger that boss fight. Either way, he's going to jump in into the fight with you at the very end, so it doesn't really matter. The next tip that I have is when you meet this guy, this NPC, this human, he is going to request that you bring something to him, uh, some sort of meatball. And all you have to do is kill one of those smaller enemies, human enemies that are nearby. They're just gonna drop this violet hell. At this point, my suggestion is go back to the NPC and give the item back to him right there instead of kind of going deeper into the area because if you go deeper and you trigger the final boss, I am not sure you can still fight this enemy. It is uh, relatively easy, I think, this fight as well, nothing complicated. And after that, you can just go into that village. You can explore the village a little bit. And at the very end, at the very top, you're going to meet with your final boss in this secret area. And this final fight, the Dusk Veil, is pretty tough. It has two phases. My suggestion, my, my only tip that I have is stay close, stay around his feet. Don't try to stay away because he has quite a few really fast range attacks. That, that is pretty uh, difficult to dodge sometimes. Uh, one of them is really overwhelming. He's going to throw a bunch of attacks right after another. So it gets pretty tough. The other thing that I did is I tried to save all my mana and my health for the second phase. If you have the life saving pill, you may want to equip that one. I had it equipped, I ended up not using it, but on phase two, if you find yourself, you're empty, you have no more health, no more drinks, you may want to use it so it will recover your health bar again back to full. So th that's kind of really my only tips that I have. That's kind of how I defeated this boss. Hopefully it helps. So there you have it. So this is how you find the secret area and beat the final boss. All right, so that is it for the video. Good luck with your journey. Have fun, enjoy the game, and I'll see you all in the next video.